morning everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video, I hope you're all doing really well. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you um, a makes video and I'm going to be talking all about everything I made before the summer holidays. Before and kind of into the summer holidays, although over the summer holidays themselves I didn't actually say anything. <laughs> So I do have some other things to share, which will be sort of September makes, and I'll be sharing them at the end of the month. Um, but yeah, I did have a few makes to catch you up on that I hadn't talked about yet. Um, and I thought rather than do them in one humongous video, I'll sort of break them up and do a summer one and a September one. So I hope that's okay. So if you're new to my channel, I'm Sally. I love sewing, knitting and making, um, making a handmade wardrobe. I love to talk about fabric, plans, um, I do sew alongs, talk about the things I've made and things like that. So if you're into sewing and making as well, I'd love you to consider subscribing to my channel. And if you are a regular viewer, thank you so much for joining me again today. So I had to really think about what I'd made before the summer holidays that I hadn't already shared in um, a makes video. And I've got a little list of around four or five things to just talk to you about today. So the first thing I made um, before the summer that I did share, I was planning to try and get done before we went away to Cornwall in the summer holidays was another Cottesloe um, two-piece swimwear set. So I did manage to get that sewn up and here it is. <laughs> I don't have a photo of this one actually. I did mean to try and get one while we we're on holiday but then that just didn't happen. I'm not too keen on getting photos of myself in swimwear I have to admit. <laughs> Um, but here is the set. I got this fabric, this lovely gingham swimwear fabric from Tilly and the Buttons. So Tilly and the Buttons released a new swimwear pattern um, just before the summer holidays. Can't remember what it's called now. Coraline, I think it is. It's a really nice um, swimwear set and it has a lovely ruffle on it. But to me, it did seem as though it was a little bit similar to the Cottesloe pattern, which I already had. So I didn't invest in the pattern, but I did really love the swimwear fabric that they brought out. So I did snap up um, a little bit of this fabric and some of the lining fabric as well. Really nice white lining inside. Um, yeah, enough to make myself another two-piece set. So the person that I used was the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe two-piece set. So this is a pattern that you can actually use to make a one or a two-piece swimwear set. Um, so the view that I tend to make, this is the only one that I've made so far, is view D, which is this one here with a really lovely high-waisted pair of bikini bottoms. And then the top is a kind of sportswear style crop top. So I'm not too keen on wearing two-piece bikinis or two-piece swimwear sets. Um, so I really liked the style of this one because you can see here um, as the model's wearing it, there's quite a lot of coverage. I really like how high-waisted the bottoms are. Um, and I've actually slightly lengthened the top as well just to give a little bit more coverage to the top as well. So I've made this pattern twice now. Um, I made one in a plain navy fabric and I do have a photo of that one so I'll put that one in here so that you can see what the fit's like. Um, so yeah, I just really wanted another one the same. So with my version of this, I've actually um, raised the back just to bring it in line with the front because the back on the pattern is really quite low at the back and I didn't really like how low it was. So I raised it slightly just so that the back is in line with the front. So it comes up quite high at the back as well. I managed to get this sewn up on one of those absolutely boiling hot days that we had here in the UK when it was almost 40 degrees. But it was really quite funny because I needed to try it on while I was making it. And because I was so hot and sweaty, too much information probably, <laughs> I just could not get this swimsuit on and off. And I thought, oh gosh, that's so small. How have I made that so small? It doesn't fit me at all. So um, I managed to sort of walk away from it and forget it and then try it on when it was a little bit cooler. And I'm pleased to say that it did actually fit me when I tried it on again. But what I will say is that I still don't think the fit of this swimsuit is great on me. So I actually make the size four and the size four in this swimsuit is for the bottoms. It's a waist 26, which is what I am. But then I find that when it comes to the um, elastic measurements, the elastic that you're supposed to cut, the elastic measurement that they give you is way too small to go around my waist. And I don't really know why that is. Um, I really struggle to get the elastic in right. So I end up actually 
using a larger piece of elastic than it tells you to um, and the piece of elastic is actually almost as wide as the waistband of the swimwear itself which is really a little bit weird to me but anyway I, I struggled around and made it work somehow but I don't think I've made the best job of this swimsuit um, and I do think I need to get some better elastic I've got this horrible rubbery elastic and I bought so much of it that I felt as though I needed to use it but I think if I make another swimwear um, so I will actually buy some better elastic and probably the kind of fabric elastic that you can get for swimwear because I think that that'll maybe be a bit more comfortable. So yeah, I really like the fit of the bottoms. The elastic's a bit weird as I say, but when they're all done and everything, um, yeah, I do feel as though the bottoms are really nice. They give really good coverage and they feel as though they hold you in place, <laughs> hold everything in kind of thing. Um, when it comes to the top, I think, not too sure about this top. <laughs> um, again, the fit of it is a little bit weird. I cut the size four again and I lengthened it slightly, but again, I had the same problem with the elastic, that the elastic measurement was just way too small for, um, for me, the elastic measurement that they gave you. So again, I had to cut my own size piece of elastic and it's not fitting in too well. I think when it's on me, it's okay, when it's all stretched out like this. Um, but it does seem to sort of want to pucker up when it's not on me. So something is a bit not right there. So I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if maybe I need to size up next time. I don't know if I need to try different elastic. I definitely, definitely like the bottoms. I really like the bottoms and I'd like to make them again. But I think I need to find another style of top that I'm going to feel a bit more comfortable in. And I need to sort out the elastic situation as well. So that's my experience so far with sewing swimwear. It's definitely not my favourite thing to sew. Um, but I am glad that I've given it a go because I think swimwear is one of those things I really struggle to buy on the high street. I struggle to buy anything that I feel comfortable in. And I struggle to get the fit right as well. So yeah, swimwear is one that I'm still battling with. Let me know your experience with the cottage if you've made it as well. Let me know if you found the same with the elastic or maybe it's just me or maybe I haven't got the size quite right. But yeah, I'm definitely, this is definitely wearable and I really enjoyed wearing it and I really like the fabric and everything. But yeah, I think I just feel as though I could do it a little bit better. So that's my... That's my Cottesloe. <laughs> That's my experience with the pattern. The pattern itself is brilliant. I have to say all the instructions are really clear. There are additional blog posts over on the Megan Nielsen website as well to help you with the sewing in of the elastic and everything. So in terms of the actual pattern itself, I can't really, I can't fault it on it being my first swimwear pattern. It was really easy to follow and I really um, got on okay making it. So yeah, let me know what you think if you've made the cottage That's that one. So the next thing I made before the summer holidays was my Jack Tar bag. So this was something that I said I wanted to make in my three looks I want to sew up for spring and summer video, which I'll link below if you haven't already seen it. And I do have another full video of me making this, so I won't waffle on too much about this one, but I thought I would include it in my makes video today. So this is the Jack Tar bag. Here it is, <laughs> just show you the pattern. So this pattern is actually by Merchant and Mills. It's the first Merchant and Mills pattern that I've ever bought or ever made. And I have to say, I'm really, really impressed by um, this pattern. It was absolutely lovely to sew up. I'll just take it out of the plastic so that it doesn't look too shiny on the camera. So you can just see from this little image here, the shape of the bag. It's a really big um, oversized bucket style bag with a round bottom and straight sides. And then there are two carry handles and there's also an over the shoulder leather strap as well. And then inside in the lining, there are some um, like lining pockets as well. So yeah, it's a brilliant one for carrying loads of stuff around in. Um, I really, really enjoyed making this one. It was a really nice sew. So the bag itself came together really quickly. I think I sewed this up in around two hours, maybe two and a half hours. Um, so I used a really kind of sturdy cotton twill fabric by Robert Kaufman, which I got from Minerva and I made it from this sand color. And then inside I just used a cotton, a floral cotton lawn to line it with. And that's worked really nicely. So the bag itself is absolutely huge, <laughs> as you can tell, which I really wanted. And um, yeah, it was really nice to have a go at attaching the hardware for the bag as well. So the leather strap and all the rivets and everything I brought as an additional add-on for a merchant at Mills. You can buy all of the hardware as an extra little set that they send you. And I'm glad I did that this time because it's the first time I've ever 
use a leather punch or rivets or anything like that. So it was nice to have everything I needed all in one place um, and try that out. And I just think that because of all the hardware in it, it does look quite professional. So you've got the magnetic sort of snap fastener in the middle there, which was really nice to sew in um, or attach. You don't really sew it in, you kind of put it in. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so pleased with this bag. It's really, really nice. What I would say is, it because it's so big and you probably want to fill it with a load of stuff, I think a stronger fabric would maybe be better if you're going to be carrying around a load of heavy stuff. So maybe like a faux leather or like a strong denim or something would be better than what I've used here. Um, this is great for sort of stuffing jumpers in and water bottles and things like that. But I think if you're going to be carrying anything that's really heavy around like laptops or things like that, um, you possibly yeah would do better using a more heavyweight fabric. But I'm really pleased to have had a go at that pattern. I really enjoyed sewing it up. I'll link my sew along video down below if you want to pop over and see a bit more information on how I found actually making the bag and doing the hardware and everything. I've actually found some heavyweight denim in my stash, which I'm thinking of using to make another version of this. And this time I might actually leave off the leather strap so that it's more of a kind of shopping bag. Um, but we'll see. But yeah, I thought that would be a good way to use up that piece of denim that I'm probably not going to use for anything else. It would make a really nice denim um, jack tile bag. So that's that one. So another make that I made before the summer holidays back in July was another jumpsuit mashup. So I made this as part of the challenge that Kath from Made by Kathcraft and I were running over on Instagram. We ran a challenge called Sew Mashup where um, we asked people to enter the challenge by mashing up two patterns together. So I'd already made my mashup jumpsuit of the Lyra dress bodice and the Sophia trousers, um, which I absolutely loved. And I really wanted to try another version of that using the Ren blouse by Chalk and Notch. And again, the Sophia trousers for the bottoms. So here it is, this is how it turned out. And I absolutely love this one. Um, yeah, it's really comfy and lovely to wear. So these are the patterns that I used for this mashup. I used the Chalk and Notch Wren blouse pattern, which is a really, really lovely blouse pattern. You can also make it as a dress as well. I've only ever made the blouse so far and I really enjoyed making it. Um, I did have a sew along of me making the blouse the first time I made it. And you might remember that I had a little bit of trouble with attaching the facing. Um, so yeah, if you are planning to make this blouse, you might want to watch my sew along and see the trouble that I had with the facing and how I worked it all out because I do think the instructions for attaching this sort of round neck facing are quite vague and they could be a bit better. But other than that, this is a really, really lovely pattern and I really enjoy sewing all of the rest of it up. So I did need to adapt this pattern slightly to make it fit into the Sophia trousers and I needed to do that by just cropping off the blouse. So I'll just show you the line drawings. So you can see that the blouse is like that. It normally comes down to around hip length I'd say and it has two darts at the bust um, and then other than that it's not really too fitted or anything. You can actually put back darts in if you want to to bring it in a little bit at the back but I haven't done that before. I prefer to have it a kind of looser fit. So what I needed to do to just adapt the pattern to make it wide enough to sort of um, make it into a jumpsuit width so that you can bring it in again with a drawstring is just to bring out the side lines of the blouse or the front and backs of the blouse so that they were in line with the width of the spire trousers um, and then just sort of crop off the length so that it came up to your natural waistline where your drawstring will be in the jumpsuit. Um, so that's a really quick sort of overview of what I did to alter the pattern. The trouser part of the jumpsuit are the good old Sophia trousers from the book Make It Simple by Tilling the Buttons and you'll know how many times I've made and used this pattern <laughs> if you watch my channel. Um, but yeah, just again, I've just um, literally sewn at the top to the bottom of the trousers and this time I added a drawstring as well like I did with my Lyra and Sophia combo and it, yeah, it worked really, really nicely. I've actually worn this one quite a lot over the summer actually and it's really comfy and really cool and I feel like the neckline is actually more comfortable than the um, one on my Lyra and Sophia um, jumpsuit. So it's really nice to wear and I really like the puffy sleeves. So in my previous Ren blouse, my first one that I made, I used a seersucker cotton. So the sleeves on that blouse are really quite sort of um, 
structured and that you get a lot of puff <laughs> with that kind of fabric so it was nice to try out the sleeves in a more drapey viscose and they just feel that little bit sort of more relaxed and easier to wear and this fabric was um, one of the Minerva new exclusive range viscoses it's called Candy Confetti I think I'll link it below it's a really really lovely viscose so soft and drapey and really nice to wear really comfy and nice to wear so yeah that was a good one really nice to have another jumpsuit in my wardrobe for summertime. I love jumpsuits, I just think they're really nice and easy to wear. So it was good to have that one. And then I just thought I'd show you this one again because I think the last time I showed this, I hadn't attached the buttons and I did say that I would just show this again when I'd added the buttons. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen what buttons I ended up using. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is my quilted version of the Logan Shacket pattern by Stylark. I absolutely love this pattern. You'll know if you've watched my videos in the past. Um, so for this one, I used a lovely, lovely, cozy quilted, pre-quilted fabric from Minerva. So you can see that it's all quilted inside. And then on the front, it's got this sort of really soft, um, crinkly feel. Um, so I adapted the pattern quite a bit to make this version of the jacket. So normally the Logan jacket pattern is um, like a proper shirt style shirt. So it has a back yoke to it, which is curved like this, and then like a bottom part of the shirt. And then the button band of the shirt is actually just folded over when you use a thinner material. So I needed to just redraft the pattern slightly just so that I could have the back without a yoke because a yoke would have been way too sort of thick and fiddly to do in this fabric. And then instead of having the fold over button bands, I just drafted myself a button band facing. Um, and then I've faced and bias bound inside all of the seams because obviously with this quilted fabric, the seams are really, or the fabric rather, is really unfinished inside and you can see all the wadding and everything. So rather than have it overlocked, I thought I would take the time to bias bind the seams. And I'm so pleased I did that because it looks really nice in this Liberty binding, I think. So I think last time I showed this, I hadn't added any buttons. I didn't know which buttons to go for. And in the end, I decided to go for these denim buttons or jeans buttons. Um, I'm not sure if they have a proper name, but to me, they just look like jeans buttons. And I'm really pleased with how they looked. I wasn't sure whether to use these or to go for like a wooden button, but I'm really pleased I went for these. I've never used these before. I've got a little reel over on Instagram actually of how I attach these or how you should attach them. So I'll link that down below if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, they were really easy to fit in actually. And I really like the effect that they give. I think they make it look a little bit more outerwear like, a little bit more sort of um, jacket like. So very pleased I went for those. And again, I haven't actually worn this yet because I thought, I did think I would need to wear this when we went on holiday in the summertime because often when we go away to Cornwall, we get really chilly weather. But this time we had really lovely weather and I just didn't need to wear a jacket like this at all. So I haven't really worn this properly yet, but I am looking forward to wearing it um, in the upcoming sort of cooler months. So I am really, really pleased with that one. I'm really glad that I gave that one a go. I was dithering around for ages as to what quilted jacket pattern I should make. And I'm pleased that I used the Logan because it turned out really nicely. So yeah, that's that one. And then lastly, I'll just share what I'm wearing, which is my finished knitted vest. So I've been knitting this vest for quite some time. And again, over the summer, because it was so hot here in England, I just didn't really want to pick up knitting at all. Um, so yeah, this one took a little bit longer to make than I'd hoped. I had hoped that I might get this done and um, I would be able to wear it sort of throughout the summertime, but that didn't happen. I finished this a couple of weeks ago, so it's gonna be a September knitted vest. So the pattern that I used was a free pattern. It's from Love Crafts and it's a Debbie Bliss pattern. I'll put the image in here because I've just, I had it on the computer. I didn't actually print it off in the end. So yeah, a really simple free pattern. It's just all done in stocking stitch with a bit of rib at the bottom. You shape for this neckline here and the armholes here. And then when you've knitted both the front and back, you join the shoulder seams and you knit literally one row of knitting um, around the neckline when you've picked all the stitches up and then you cast off and then the same for the armbands as well. So yeah, it's a really what should be quick and simple pattern, but actually took me quite a while to make. 
So this is the yarn that I used to make this vest. It's a paint box yarns, cotton, double knitting. Um, and I got this in the sale and I think I got about five balls of this. But it came in quite a lot of colours and I got a pack of five for about eight pounds something. So yeah, it was a lovely cheap knit. So it was really nice to make that one. I'll just stand up so that you can see the length of this vest. So I've got it kind of tucked up with my jeans here, but when I pull it out, it comes to around just above my hips here. So I think it'll actually be a really nice one for next summertime, one that I can wear with my spire trousers and jeans and skirts and things like that. I actually like this much more than I was expecting to. I wasn't sure if it would look a little bit old fashioned, <laughs> but I actually really like how it's turned out. I haven't properly blocked this yet. I've given it a bit of a steam with the iron, um, and I wondered if that would be enough, but I wonder if it can actually benefit from a proper soak block because you can probably tell where I'm wearing it here that it wants to curl in a little bit at the arms where I've done that um, armband. But I thought for the purpose of this video, I'd just wear it today and then I might actually give it a proper soak and then put it away for next summer. But yes, very pleased with that one. Um, I'm pleased to have it done before it gets too cold. I might get a little bit of wear out of this before it gets too cold, you never know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's that one. So those are all of my sort of pre-summer makes and things that I finished off for the summertime. As I say, I do have some more makes to share and I'll be filming another video sharing those with you and that will probably be out later in September. Let me know in the comments what you've been sewing and making as well because I always really love to know. It's great for my own inspiration as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you do watch regularly and you haven't yet subscribed I'd love you to consider subscribing because it really does help me out. If you have enjoyed this video then please do leave me a like too. Thanks for watching everyone, take care and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!